Back in 2021, I did a video interview with Tarla where we talked about her transition to gray hair and she used wigs, which was a method I hadn't heard about. And I thought it was a super cool option for many women. When we did the video, Tarla was fully grown out with her gray hair, but she was still feeling a little unsure about it and especially about styling it. So 18 months later, I figured let's check in and see how she's doing today. So thanks for coming here, Tarla, and talking to me. Thanks, Katie, for having me back. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Your hair looks fabulous. It looks like it's really grown. Thank you. Yes. Yes. That was that was something I didn't love last time. It was short and it was kind of unruly. And I feel like it's more manageable now that it's longer. I don't know if that makes sense, but for me, yes. So last time we talked, you were having some issues with styling and couldn't really figure out how to style your gray hair, especially because as we know, gray hair is prone to yellowing. So we have to be careful with heat tools. So what have you discovered now that makes it easier for you to enjoy styling your gray hair? I'd love to hear all your thoughts. Well, I will say I haven't made too much progress in terms of I haven't tried the heat tools. So I am nervous about trying the heat tools still. So I have not So you may notice, like I call it, I like to call it um, platinum champagne. Mm -hmm. Um, but because I'm going to have a little bit of that warmth in it because I had naturally brunette hair with red undertones. And I think that's why, and it it can also be the oxidation and all that with the ends. You could better explain that than I could, but, um, I kind of learned to just go with the flow versus trying to fight all these things. So for me, uh, you might recall or people watching that I had a hair dye allergy, which is why I went gray to begin with, and then used the wigs. So because of that, I cannot use all of the silver, you know, and purple products and blue products that kind of tone your hair more. So I just kind of, I just kind of, I don't want to say gave up, but gave up. I was like, you know what? It's okay. Like it doesn't have to be this perfect silver. It is my hair and it's kind of cool anyway. Some people kind of think I'm actually, when I get on camera, some people think I'm blonde. I, I don't know. So I just go with it. I do use, um, this is not styling. I I think you're going to ask me about products, but in terms of styling. So what I did like last night, I washed my hair. I don't love blow drying my hair unless I'm going somewhere. And I don't actually love my silver hair straight. For some reason, I loved my brunette hair straight. I prefer some curl in my silver hair. I don't know why. And so I literally went to bed with wet hair and woke up like this. So I did nothing to my hair. Really? How nice. It looks really smooth. It's not, it doesn't look like, like you have a lot of unwanted frizz or anything. It looks great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, I did nothing to my hair. I only air dry it. I don't use the blow dryer except very rarely. And again, I don't love my hair looking straight. What I was thinking about doing before this interview, to be really honest, was to try the heat tools. But I was like, what if my hair fries off and then I have to talk to Katie? That wouldn't right. be a good thing. So, you know, because the gray hair with the heat is, or it could turn yellow or it could burn. And I, you know, I almost did it, but I figured, you know, this is just my everyday. This is what I look like when I go to the market, when I go walking outside. I mean, I usually put my hair up a lot, but uh, this is just what it looks like. Literally wet. And I will tell you why it's the great products that I was using. Basically, you're letting an air dry from wet and you're sleeping on it overnight when it's damp. I sound really lazy now, <laughs> but yes, I sleep on my hair wet. I either put it in one of those turban towels that are specially made to uh, not put frizz, but I, I don't do that all the time. Literally last night, I just slept. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, put my hair up. Like I think a lot of women do off your neck and I literally just slept. I put a, obviously a towel on my pillow, um, but I just sleep like that. Or sometimes I'll put it up in like a little bun um, and fall asleep like that. But typically it's just, it's down and loose and, or I might be working for like another hour or two before I go to bed and have it up in in a bun. And then it's like damp when I go to bed. But yeah, I mean, I get this, I have a natural curl, a natural wave today. It looks curlier. Some days it looks more wavy. I mean, these are natural little curls that happen on their own. So I'm like, why not? Yeah, I think it's beautiful. I mean, there's no need to straighten it. And also I think what's nice about, uh, curls with gray hair is because, gray hair is not just one color. Like most, like, you know, when we dyed our hair, it was one color. And yeah. when you have your natural patterns, like I, you know, I have a lot of dark underneath. So then when you have waves, it kind of shows both sides. And so I think it gives some movement to your hair, which is really pretty. So. Yeah. And I love what you have going on because it actually looks like you paid for that. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. I know. I know. I'm, I wish I'd known that 20 years ago yeah. and I wouldn't have done it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so what products have you, did you have to change all your products or do you just have a few that you like to use now? Do you use less or more? Like, I'd love to hear everything. 
Yeah, I probably mentioned since we talked last time, you want to use something white or transparent. You don't want any color because it could transfer to your hair. I try to stay away. Some, th- some products I have like have that kind of, you know, that beigey, creamy, like yellow, a little bit texture and I get nervous, but some, you know, I have some stuff I use, I use it sometimes. But basically I'm using Pro's shampoo. So if you're not familiar with it, I don't know if you've heard of it, Pro's shampoo. Actually, they sent me a box of their products to test. So I have, I'm going to use that. Oh, awesome. Okay. Well, I could just tell you up front, but I love them. So they're really perfect for someone with silver or gray hair because um, they customize it exactly to your hair. So it's like a formula based, based on you. You answer a bunch of questions as to the texture of your hair, all, all these different questions. And they sent me some in the past. And then I just forgot about like reordering because it's online and I like to get stuff that I could just have at my disposal quick, you know, somewhere nearby. Um, But then I reordered it. So it's not even the same formula. So I can tell you that I didn't remember what my formula was last time. And I did have silver hair at the time and it's a different formula and it still works just as great. So basically it's their shampoo and their conditioner. And that's all that I use. And that's what I used last night. And so it really helps your hair be less unruly and more tamed. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I noticed that because I took that quiz and they ask you so much about your hair and how you take care of it and the color and and the health of your hair. And so I'm really interested to try a product that's tailor made for my hair. So I'm glad you like it because I haven't tested it yet. Yes, yes. So um, anyway, so so that's what I'm using there. And then I also have this Orib Silverati that I do have as conditioner. So I've never tried the shampoo, but I have to be careful with anything with color in it. So I have been using that. I don't know if I mentioned that last time, if I had been using that, but I haven't used that in a while. So when I do, my hair looks like it's got more of the, like what I call champagne tinge in it. It'll look more silvery when I use that, but it almost for me makes my hair feel whiter than it already is. And my hair looks darker on camera, but it's lighter in person. And so it almost makes like almost too white sometimes like I love it don't get me wrong but I don't need it all the time it just it sharpens up the gray so it is a really great product and really that's it I mean I use some um I use oh my gosh now I'm forgetting the name of it but they have a purple bottle orb and it's like a styling cream it's I think it's just called styling cream or something like that it's really really nice I use this uh verb ghost oil also it's white so it's just like an oil that you can put on your hair. And I also have been using that Bumble and Bumble. It's like their UV protectant. I think for um, I think for gray hair, you really need a UV protectant as well. Yeah, I use a UV protectant too every day. The one I've been using is the Scene Blowout Cream, even if I'm not blowing my hair out just because it, it does the ultraviolet light protection. Yeah. I still need to read more of my friend Jolie's blog about all that because I was using like um, an Aveda product that was spraying your hair, but she pointed out it wasn't actually protecting you from the UV rays. And that's what you want to care about. And I know I'll just say for anybody watching, not everybody's gray hair will turn gray from heat or sun, but my hair is super prone to it. Some of us are prone to it. Some of us aren't. So. And I think it depends where you live. We both live in California and so the the sun rays are stronger here and so the sun's very strong and so if you're out a lot in the sun but I like I said I just kind of was like you know I'm not going to worry about it I'm just going to go live my life and it is what it is instead of like fighting something sometimes if you just go with it it's easier and that's just kind of what I resolve to it's okay if my hair is not this like I like I love the sealy I see gray, but it's okay if that's not what it is because that's not what my hair is. So I just go with it, you know? A lot of women feel like when they go gray that they have to change all their clothing colors. And I don't totally agree with that. I just think you should wear what makes you feel happy or comfortable. But there are certain colors that really bring out your hair that are fun to wear if you want to like really be snazzy. So have you found anything like that? Like hair or makeup colors that you really like with your newly gray hair? So I normally wouldn't be wearing blue. I just picked this out of my closet. I've been wearing so much pink and so much peach uh, Mm -hmm. that I am like, I'm just going to do a different color today. So that's what I did. So normally I probably wouldn't be wearing a blue, but you know what? I don't want to stop myself from wearing certain colors because I have gray hair. Right. That's how I feel. Like, no. And so people say, don't wear black if you have gray hair because it's going to, it's going to wash you out. It's too harsh and don't wear black in your makeup and all this stuff. And I've always loved black clothes, so I still wear black sometimes. I think for me, what is most complimentary, it's going to depend on your skin and your, um, you know, the color of your gray and your complexion and all that. But for me, 
I think a dark charcoal uh, looks, or even a lighter charcoal looks really nice on me and a light gray. Um, but I like white, black. I like all the nudes. So before I went gray, I had dark brown hair and, um, naturally, and then I dyed it black for a long time. And I love all the nudes. I love those Kim Kardashian colors, you know, that are very neutral. That's just, I'm not into the whole bright, the jewel colors, which everyone tells you to wear with gray hair. So I'm just for the, the silver sisters on the side. If you don't want to wear jewel colors, it's okay. I think pinks are very complimentary. I think anything in that kind of, um, pink and peachy uh, area is the most complimentary, which I'm not wearing today, but that's okay. I said, you know what? I'm tired of all these rules. So that's what I would go. Now with makeup, we were talking about this earlier. Uh, you're wearing a red lip. Everyone tells you, oh, you're great. You have to wear a red lip because you're going to look washed out. So the only one complaint that I'll have about my gray hair for me is that I love contrast. I loved being a brunette with the, the uh, lighter complexion and the green eyes. I, I think it's stunning. I love uh, uh, blondes who have brown eyes. Like I like contrast or whatever. Your skin is a different color than your hair. There's something there because it adds interest. Yeah. And so for me now I have the light eyes, the light skin, the light hair. It can be like blah, but also we were talking about this on camera. Like I look more washed out to you, the viewer who's watching this than I do in real life. In real life, I have a lot more color. It's just not uh, translating on camera. So could I have said, okay, I'll wear a red lip cause I'm on camera. I could have, but I like the neutral colors. So in real life, I just want to put that disclaimer. This looks a lot better than what you're seeing now. It looks like I have a lot more color it's for some reason, zoom and all these, they wash out my skin more than it is. So my skin look is darker in person. It looks here, but I do find that one thing challenging because with the dark hair, if I had no makeup on now, there's a problem with the no makeup. So I have Zooms that I get on with different people for different reasons. And sometimes you just don't feel like being all made up and it's not on camera. You don't have to be camera ready. It's just for that other person. And I try to wear less makeup and I do, but I don't necessarily feel good about it sometimes. And I felt like I could get away with that with brunette hair, but you can't really get away with it with, with me. Now, if I had an olive complexion, a darker complexion with the same color hair, it would be easier. So it just depends on what you have. Yeah, I feel the same way in terms of in real life, I actually find I wear less makeup than I used to, because I think for me, as I was getting older, because I'm uh, older than you, um, since I'm already a pale person and I don't have hardly any skin color, you know, it's like I'm like a ghost and I had dark eyebrows and dark hair, which so sometimes I felt like if I didn't wear makeup, you know, I still you could see me, not much of me, you could see my eyebrows and my hair. Now I just, it's just the eyebrows, you know, so um but at the same time, I don't want to replace one thing I was always trying to worry about, which was my roots, with another thing like my makeup. You know what I mean? So now I'm like, you know, I don't feel like wearing makeup today. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, I also am washed out on screen and sometimes I care, sometimes I don't. You know, we just have to live our lives. So Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's interesting. Like, like, I almost always have makeup when I go out, but all I do is I don't like today. I actually have foundation on to give me more color, but I usually just put something under my eyes because I have darkness. A little bit around my nose, I might have some redness. And I put something on my eyes. I, put, I do put bronzer, blush, and lips, but like no base, no foundation. But there are the times when I go out to walk my dog and I'm like, I do not feel like putting on makeup, but I have to say, I always have my sunglasses on because I, it's, it's, I have to have something. It's just, it's too white, too light for me. So I put like my sunglasses on. Now that you've been gray for over a year and a half, like, do you feel more confident when you're out in the gray hair? Do you feel like, oh, I'm too young to be gray? I shouldn't like, do you feel awkward? Or are you feeling pretty accepting? Cause I know you, you kind of didn't have a choice because you had these allergies that were so severe. So I know you're kind of thrust into going gray before you were ready. So how, how are you feeling about that now? Like your confidence? Yeah, I think that's a big part of it. Well, I, I will say this. My mom, um, even when she was older, wanted to dye her hair. And at the end, I'm like, she, you know, she was sick. And I said, mom, it's too much work. I can't dye your hair on top of everything else. So she went gray. But that was kind of instilled from her. Like, you don't go gray type of thing. She never said that. Uh, but, you know, I was the girl who would never do the gray route, which I probably talked about before. So now I'm more used to it. Um, I'm not like, I'm not going to say I'm a hundred percent like, oh yes. Like I really do love brunette hair and I will say I've missed my brunette hair. However, I have the wigs. If I feel like being brunette, I throw a wig on my head. <laughs> do you still wear wigs very often? I, I wear, I do wear them a lot of camera. 
So I've been doing a lot of podcast interviews where, um, you know, they're reusing the video. And because I still haven't figured out how to style my hair in a way that I love, I haven't used the heat tools. I'm going to have to figure that out one day. I'm just really concerned about something happening. I've seen people's hair turn different colors and all kinds of crazy things. Not saying that would happen, but until I really get that hang of it, I think I'm still like a little bit uneasy. And so like, I'm happy being here. I've done my own videos with gray hair, yeah. but on something where it's like, I'm going for this podcast and it's being shown to everyone else's audience. I'm like, you know, I still love my wigs. So I still wear them. But if I'm walking the dog, if I'm going to the grocery store, I'm not running around town wearing wigs. No, if it's a special event, if someone invites me to the house for Christmas or something, I might wear a wig. Yeah. You know, but like, otherwise, you know, I'm like this every day of my life outside of the camera thing. What I like about you is that you're not neurotic about it. Like feeling like I have to be all gray all the time, or I have to only wear wigs. Like you're yeah. like just doing what feels right to you every yeah. day. And I yeah. like that because that's the whole point to me. That's what I liked about going gray in the first place. And and I know there's other things that happen to people in life that are like this, but like just thinking that I don't need to feel I need to be a certain way. It's up to me how I want to be. Yeah, no, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I've got to go with my own pace because like you said, I was thrust into this. It wasn't like I was contemplating going gray. It was like one day it was like, oh, you can't dye your hair anymore. And it's shocking. Um right. But I think the cool thing about having silver hair is that if you are one of the few, there's more people doing it, but like everybody is a blonde, everybody's a brunette. And so it makes you stand out. That's and true. So That's why uh, sometimes we have to get together with a bunch of the other Los Angeles ladies. Cause I've been to some of these meetups. And when you look through this room and you see all these different colors of hair and you realize how uh, dyed hair does not have all that um, dimension. Yes. So you could have 40 women with gray hair in a room and it, nobody would be the same. It's all different. And then light yeah. hits it differently. I mean, it's just really interesting. Everybody's pattern. Yeah. That's, that's something I've really enjoyed about it. So. Yeah. And, and I should say also a lot for me um, with my comfort with the gray has to do with like my hair is really light in the front and it's really white and silvery. And so I think I like the contrast a little. And so I, I like, I wish my hair, my gray was a little, little darker, like a light gray, but a little darker. And I think oh, that has something to do with it too. I feel like it's the contrast thing that I feel like I need. And right. so that's probably part of why, you know, it depends on the silver too. Like I do love silver hair. I think it's beautiful, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I know it's too bad because you can't, because of your allergies, obviously you're not going to be using manic panic or whatever to add some color. To I, I actually thought in the future, I'm like, should I do this or should I not? But I'm like, I still think if you want to color your hair a little bit in your gray, it's okay. Like, do whatever makes you happy. Yeah. I did think about getting possibly highlights, but not highlights. So low lights. So basically having them do the foils. So it's not touching my scalp, but I am still dicey about that because having it on my hair at all, it do does touch your neck, you know, and your hair's on your neck and I don't know if my body, like, like, I think I told you I tried, um, oh, what was that hair mask? It's from Sephora. There's, some, it's not their brand. There are, oh, Moroccan oil, I think has hair masks. Oh, right. mm -hmm. And I don't know if it, it was that I had actually taken, like done some other stuff in the meantime, I had taken like an anti-anxiety medication a couple of days in a row that I normally don't take because I was feeling like extra stress. I usually don't take any medicine. And I don't know if it was a reaction to that or that the hair color, but I started feeling itchy. I had to take Benadryl. I was very itchy and it freaked me out. I didn't put it on my scalp very much. I could try to stay away, but of course it's going to touch your, your shoulder, you know, when you're washing it off and stuff. Right. And then after that, I was freaked out. So I freak out even about thinking about low lights, but I did think like a gray. So I'm not talking about a different hair color gray, but a little bit of darker gray with low lights, especially in the front. Right. How However, then I think, well, maybe I won't like it. Maybe I'm going to miss that I have this lighter, you know, hair. Like it's, it's hard to know, but I have one gray wig. I think you know that. Yeah. And that yeah. Gray wig, I love, it's very uniform and I love that color. It, it's a little bit, it's not a dark gray, but a little darker. And I think that is my chief complaint to the hair gods. <laughs> yeah. You made me a little white. It could have been a little darker, but it's okay. I'm good. I have hair in my head and that's a blessing because some people don't have hair at all. And so I'm, I'm thankful for that, you know? 
Right. I know. It's how we always have to remember all this because there's so much to be thankful for. You know, when we have yes. friends who've lost hair through chemo or. Yes. Um, and I'm going to just mention for anybody watching this that if you have gray hair, but you're not satisfied with it, I have some suggestions on the blog um, for things you can do, like temporary things, maybe to help you with your hair. And I also have a whole article about uh, how to get through your gray hair transition when you have no choice, like Tarla did, when you're like because of allergies or other reasons, you've been forced into gray hair and you weren't quite ready. Um, and one of the big questions that everybody wants to know is how is dating with gray hair? So unfortunately, I don't have many dating experiences to share. However, I do have something very interesting to share. So I was nervous, even though most of the people in real life who've complimented me, my gray hair happen to be men. Mm -hmm. So I know like I've gotten a bunch of compliments. I had two guys approach me randomly when I was out. I told you when I was walking about those stories, a guy 15 years younger than me um, approached me also when I was just walking and, you know, my gray hair up in a bun. So, and then I've had people at different restaurants and places, guys, especially younger guys, like, your hair is so cool. But I wondered like, well, how is this going to be accepted in dating? And so I've been so busy working. I really haven't gone out on the dates. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds like a long time not to, but I really have been busy with other things. However, um, I have put myself on, on, on dating sites and I just also haven't found anyone I'm interested in, but I am on dating sites and I wanted to know, I said before I had the brunette hair and I got whatever, you know, a good amount of, of winks, likes, whatever you want to call it is this going to be any different? And that was actually a test for me to see like, how are men going to react to this? And so I have my, I have everything on there. I have pictures of me with my hair exactly like this, my natural silver hair. I have it with the silver wig. I have it with the uh, brunette hair. I have it with my pink hair. I have different photos of me with all different hair. And I say, I'm naturally silver. This is my hair. So they have a caption in this photograph. And then I say, I hope that you like silver hair. And then also, I'm also sometimes a brunette. I'm also sometimes like having pink hair. And I found that I got just as many likes and just as many um, winks as I did before. My main photo is with gray hair. So I really found that um, inspiring and like, oh, good. Like, this is not going to be a problem, right? And I did notice, though, the photos that are liked the most once they get into the profile happen to be my, my darker hair, my pink hair. They are liking those photos most. I'm not going to lie. But my main photo is just like this. This is the first thing that they see. And um, I am getting a lot of, of guys messaging me. So I think that speaks for itself. If they don't like it, well, they don't. That's who you are. And. You know, I would never, whoever is watching, like I would never dye your hair for somebody like dye back if you want to dye it, but not because a guy is like, oh, I don't like your hair like this or, or a family member or whatever. And for me, it, it just, it is what it is. It's going to have to be this way because um, I could technically dye my hair if I wanted to risk um, and have my EpiPen nearby, but it's to me, it's not worth it. I mean, I know I see women all the time at the salon that are you know, like um, I, I don't go to the salon much anymore because I don't dye my hair, but you know where they're using that pick to kind of itch their scalp when their dye yeah. is in their head. And it's like, you're having an allergic reaction. Like you're not aware of it. It's minor, but that's an allergy. Right. And it can get worse over time. And I didn't know, and I don't think I've totally got it until I spoke to you last time, that that's yeah. what I was going through too the last couple of years. Because I don't know if I just thought they were using different dyes, but it got to the point where the itching was unbearable and, and would last for a couple of days, you know? And so I don't know why that wasn't the kick in the butt that got me to stop dying, you know, but. Oh, I don't remember you saying that. So you had itching also. And it was. I did too. I, it was um, probably the last year and a half or two that I was dying and it didn't happen so much when I died at home. It was more when I did it at the salon. So I think I just assumed it was the salon dyes, you know, but when I look back, like really bad itching is not a good sign. Like that should have be a warning. You know, it's like they say when somebody gets hit, killed by a bison at, at Yellowstone and, and the, the park rangers are like, he had teeth. He weighs 2000 pounds. He's snorting at you. What part of this right. is you do not understand? And it's like when your hair is itching uncontrollably and you feel like crud and your hair looks damaged down the line, then that's probably a sign this isn't working for you anymore. You know, but well, at least, you know, we all figured this out. Like you said, the, the 
positive thing is like, you don't have to worry about dyeing your roots. You don't have to worry about roots because you no longer have roots. And that is even why when I thought about putting low lights to have a little more, uh, you know, and especially in the front to make it a little bit darker, I did think, you know, like, then I'm going to have these white roots and then I'm going to have darker. I'm like, it's just, I don't want roots. Like, I just don't want to deal with it. And so I'm like, no, <laughs> That's how I feel. That's the whole point is like, I'm so done with that. You know, we're yeah. done with all that worry and having to run to the salon because something's not right. And you've got a vacation coming up and you need it a certain way. And that's, that's the best part. Even on days when we don't like our hair, it's like, you know, it's still easier. You're not always thinking, oh my yeah. God, somebody can see my roots. I was going to have my final question to you be, are you overall happy with your gray hair? But it seems like it is working out for you. Maybe it wasn't what you planned, but this is how things worked out. You're doing a great job with it. And you know, I'd love to hear other thoughts about it before we conclude. So. Yeah, I mean, I think I've become more acclimated to it. I mean, you know, I think what is hard, and I talked about this last time, is there's like a loss of control, right? And so it's like you, you like you're given a certain color, right? And so now you can't, you don't run the salon and dye it or put the highlights or low lights or whatever. But I think there's an ease to it. I think like it does really, it does really cause you to think about what matters in life. Like, does your hair color really matter that much? It's right. just hair on your head. I mean, it, it does cause you to see like, also, you know, people should love you just as you are, no matter if you have gray hair, no matter if you, I don't know, whatever, whatever you have going on with yourself and, and who you are, your personality like you want someone to love you as you are. And this is just as it is. And so, yeah, I mean, I definitely come to grow from last time to this time. And I really do like my hair a lot more than I did at the time of the last interview. I don't know if I sound like I do because I love still, I, I miss being a brunette. I'm not going to lie that I still love being a brunette, but I get that opportunity. So I would say to anybody who's like, Maybe like, oh, I don't know if I should, I'm already gray. Should I dye my hair back? Or I don't know if I should go gray. What if I miss being a, whatever, like me, a brunette, you can have a wig. And so I feel like to my future guy, if you're out there, <laughs> no, like I offer the best of all worlds because I'm silver, but I also am a brunette and I also have pink hair and I also have blonde hair. And so you just can have it all. And we live in a day and age where we're lucky that we have wigs and all these different options. And so you don't have to only have one hair color. You can play with it and do different things, just like you can do different hairstyles. You can still have different hair colors. You're not locked into anything. You can do whatever you want, which is, this is what you taught me in our, our video. And I'll post that original video down in the show notes below. And I'll also include a new blog post I have. that's a tutorial about how to go gray with wigs, because I think it's a great option. And even once you're gray, like you're saying, you can have fun changing it up. You know. Yeah, it doesn't have to just be for Halloween and you can get expensive wigs that look like real hair, like my brunette wig looks like real hair. My other ones are cheaper. Yeah. And you know what? Whenever I go anywhere, no one knows I have a wig on. Only like a hairdresser or someone who wears wigs themselves. Like I know I can tell when someone's wearing a wig now. I didn't used to know. Before that, I had no idea. No one even knows you're wearing a wig. So I got comfortable with that too. That was awkward at first, but yeah, I get to have it all. So it's a good thing. Uh, that's wonderful. I, I love it. Well, I'm so glad we get to catch up again and, and see yeah. how you're doing. And uh, I'll be posting a Tarla's story on the blog shortly, and that will also go in the show notes. So thanks for watching. And thanks again, Tarla, for coming on. Thanks for having me, Katie.